What's up everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. Today I wanted to talk about uh, how we learn and how we study in residency. A lot of people think when medical school ends, that's kind of when your uh, studying or your learning ends. But I think just the opposite, I think it just begins. And a lot of what we do in residency is we spend a lot of time learning and studying in, in the books and cadaver labs, and especially as a surgeon, uh, we spend a lot of time kind of dissecting cadavers and kind of learning our anatomy and surgical approaches. So I wanted to uh, make a short video about how we learn and how we study in residency. A book that I use uh, to study for cases, um, surgery itself. It tells you the steps of the surgery. Um, it tells you where you make your decision. It tells you all that. And these are some of the books here that I use and study. Also, this is a uh, journal article called uh, Yellow Journal. We read a lot of journals and uh, residency and we have journal clubs, which we meet and talk about different uh, journal articles. I got some more videos for you guys, kind of actual footage of the lectures that we have and um, just tune in and you'll check those out here shortly. So you pretend like this is a knee, right? You pretend like this is a knee. So this is lateral. So it's as if the radio radius was the fibula, right? So you're going to pick up on this like you're doing a pivot shift. So what you're doing is you're going to just pick up on this radius as you do this, right? This is the test. And so what happens? Just like a pivot shift, in extension, this is sublux. Mm -hmm. And as you flex it up, it reduces, right? Mm -hmm. So that's posterolateral. That's the test. Right? Are you getting do it. at it now? Are you getting <laughs> do it? On our artery. And then you start on this side. So you put the, put the wrist in this position. You say, hold against me. Hold against me. Push up with your tongue. There's the first dorsal compartment, the third. First, third. Hold it tight against me. There are the two wrist extensors extensor carpi radialis longus, extensor carpi radialis brevis. <coughs> Straighten your fingers out. That's the fourth dorsal compartment. All the the meniscus, and about a slice later, you see the posterior cruciate ligament. So that's an area you want to scrutinize. I'll come back to that uh, topic again. But this is also a good, uh, a good plane to look at the articular cartilage, as you can see there. If you're thinking that you've never seen an MRI that looks this nice before, this was a case I saved specifically that was from a research magnet, but it shows the anatomy really well. And uh, so next we look at sort of more miscellaneous things. You see the fat pads. This patient actually has a little bit of edema in the superpatellar fat pad, which is kind of a nonspecific finding that you can't see. Majority of our lectures are taught by our professors, who are our staff, and they are surgeons. But there are many lectures that residents give. Here, I am giving a lecture on calcaneus fractures. So I would get a CT scan is from a pro prognostic and also an um, operative uh, standpoint if we're going to fix it. Uh, and to help us classify these fractures, Sanders classification is most commonly used. It's based on the uh, number and location of the articular fragments on the uh, widest portion of your coronal view. Um, types 1 through 4, type 1 is non-displaced, type 2 is a, uh, I think of it as two fragments, type 3 is three fragments, and then 4 is common. Once every few weeks we have what is called fracture rounds. This is when we get together over dinner and discuss various bone fractures and how to fix them. Another large component of our training is with cadavers. We spend a large percentage of our time dissecting and practicing surgery on cadavers. Here we are practicing how to fix a labral tear in the shoulder. This is one of the rooms that we use to practice these surgeries and another video here showing a rotator cuff repair. We're using a cadaver shoulder and then looking on the monitor here to evaluate our progress. Learning never ends. Residency is fast paced and it is a large learning curve. But if you keep some of the same study habits that, you, that got you through college and medical school, you'll do just fine. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.